मिट्टी है आधार नीव का मिट्टी से ही ईंट बनी इसी ईंट ने स्वप्न महल को सुंदर दृढ़ आकार दिया टेक्नोलॉजी ऑफ होम भारत में निर्माण की बेहतरी के लिए शैक्षणिक जगत के साथ साथ उद्योग के प्रतिष्ठित दिग्गजों द्वारा ज्ञान साझा करने का एक स्वतंत्र मंच है ये जेके सीमेंट और एसोसिएशन ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इंडस्ट्री इंडिया की एक संयुक्त पहल है इस पहल में एक आम आदमी की मदद करने के लिए ये सुनिश्चित करेंगे की वो एक मजबूत सुंदर घर बनाने के लिए उपयोग की जाने वाली सामग्रियों की उपयोगिता और प्रक्रियाओं ऐसी पूरी तरह अवगत हो जिससे उसके घर के निर्माण के लिए धन का उपयोग ठीक से किया जा सके तो आइए हम सुनते हैं प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर मनु संथानम से ब्रिक वर्क के बारे में सो हाउ टू आइडेंटिफाई अ गुड क्वालिटी ब्रिक ब्रिक्स आर मेड फ्रॉम अ प्रोसेस ऑफ मोल्डिंग एंड देन बर्निंग एट अ हाई टेम्परेचर सो द किल इन विच द ब्रिक इज मेड हैज टू हैव अ प्रॉपर कंट्रोल टू एंश्योर दैट द बर्निंग हैपन्स फॉर द राइट एन ऑफ टाइम at the right end of temperature the brick that is obtained from this kind of a manufacturing process should have sharp edges should have a uniform dimension the typical dimension that we are looking for in a brick is uh, 11 inches by 7 inches by 3 and 1/2 inches that's the typical dimension that we see a brick should have a proper dimension without any breakage at the edges it should have sharp edges and it should look uniform in color and in appearance so another way to look at uh, the quality of the brick is to take two bricks and then sound them or rather beat them against one another which will result in a good metallic sound being created at that point so the quality of the sound that you get by uh, banging the bricks together can help you understand whether the brick is of good quality another simple test that the home builder can do is take the brick at a height of about 3 feet and allow it to drop to the ground So from this height when it drops to the ground it should not break. A good quality brick will have sufficient strength to enable it to retain its shape when it drops. Uh, so how to identify a poor quality brick? Now one obviously one has to look at the uh, the dimensions being proper. Uh, if the dimensions are not good or if there is breakage at the edges or if it's very easy to remove by just scratching with a fingernail those kinds of bricks are not of good quality. the color itself if it's not uniform that gives an uh, that gives a suggestion of a poor quality brick now the color itself need not always be very red it can also have a yellowish characteristic depending upon the type of soil that you're getting it from but that the color has to be uniform after it is burnt that's most important so mostly for residential construction one would tend to use a red clay brick or a fly ash concrete brick Uh, depending upon the availability and the quality of the material that can be obtained one direct advantage of a fly ash concrete brick over a red, regular red clay brick is that it absorbs much less water so that's one good quality of the fly ash concrete brick that you don't get from the red clay brick but sometimes when you want an aesthetic appearance that needs that red clay uh, appearance on the surface then obviously you would choose a red clay brick Now autoclave aerated concrete blocks are of a size that are that is quite large as compared to a regular brick nearly uh, double the length double the height and double the width as a result of this where you put a total of 8 bricks you can replace the entire uh, thing by one autoclave aerated concrete block however because autoclave aerated concrete is not very strong the primary use of such blocks is in partition walls and infill walls uh, especially when you're making a may, maybe a framed structure of 2 to 3 stories in that case the infill walls can be made with autoclave aerated concrete now generally stacking of bricks is done in a very specific arrangement uh, in which uh, we uh, ensure that we build almost a squareish uh, sort of a structure and we build it up in such a way that the mason can reach for the brick and place it in the intended wall location as easily as possible to minimize that effort and the stacking should be done in such a way that the stack itself is stable and the bricks don't tend to topple one way or the other so why does cracking appear in brickwork uh, cracking in brickwork can appear because of a number of reasons uh, 
In most cases, uh, the reasons are related to the plaster that we put on top of the brickwork. Uh, sometimes we don't choose our sand properly for the plaster, if there's too much silt in it, or if clay matter is present in the sand also, it can lead to some swelling and absorption that leads to expansions. Uh, the other possibility is uh, that uh, uh, there is significant bit of water absorption happening by the brick. Uh, then there are structural causes that can actually be much more serious because when you have a plaster crack, it's not that serious, you can repair it. But structural causes are a lot more serious where you may have foundation settlements uh, and then you can start seeing much wider and larger cracking happening in the structure. So what type of brickwork bonds are used? Uh, bond. Now bond essentially le uh, means the method of arrangement of the bricks. So you may choose to arrange the bricks along their length side to side or along their the cross section side to side or you can mix and match the type of arrangement in such a way that your wall gets the maximum strength. So two of the most common methods of arranging bricks as far as structural uh, load-bearing masonry is concerned are the English bond and the Flemish bond. So the method of arrangement of the brick will differ in these two types of bonds. The ultimate idea is to make sure that the maximum load carrying capacity is given to the wall by a proper arrangement of the bricks. So that arrangement is simply called the bond. Professor Dr. Manu Santhanam, a building technology of construction management division Nirman ke Visheshagya, or Vartaman me, IIT Madras me IC or SR Vibhag ke associate dean hai. Technology of Home, Sudrid Sundar Nirman.